Uh, let me just like adjust the camera. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Am I audible? Okay, um, I would prefer a verbal POI. Or if you can just like use the raising hand emoji, that would be like also very good. Okay. I'm going to talk about four things in my speech. Firstly, three pieces of characterization. And secondarily, why individuals are biological and historically proven to be more likely to be selfish. And thirdly, why is it good, bad for social communication? And finally, I will talk about larger societal impact, which my second speaker will also extend. So then with three pieces of characterization. Firstly, what does it mean by innate human nature? It means that A, the average person is believed to have self-prioritized and morality regulatory framework are more central around the nature and the a characteristic that people are more likely to be self-oriented and have their own prioritized interests. And secondarily, even though we're saying that innate human nature right now is predominantly believed to be selfish, but we currently in the status quo, even though we believe that people are self-interested and people are rational, we still have the glorification and desirable human nature when somebody is selfish. So we're saying, by saying that we prefer a world that is like people believe that this is selfish, doesn't mean that we will traumatize and we will just like stigmatize people of being selfless and so forth. We're saying, even though we believe that the fundamental nature of individuals are selfish, it doesn't mean that we believe this is something unchangeable. For example, we believe that people are burned to like uh, be more favorable to eat meat, and we believe that people are burned to be relatively immature. People are believed to, to be relatively emotional, but we still are having like active restrictions and active regulations on how we're enforcing the change in the society. So we're saying by taking the selfish stance as the initial beginning of the human nature, doesn't we? Or doesn't mean that we're taking the moral upfront of like justifying selfish. And this is never the burden of proof for affirmative today. The second piece of characterization is what exactly does it look like to be selfish and self-interested? Firstly, it means that when people are having this narrative in mind, they prioritize their own interests in social interaction. And secondarily, we're saying this is not like absolutely criminal and evil, and this doesn't equal to jealousy. We're saying self is quite quite like distinguished from like just completely being like self-oriented and self-centered. I think side of feminism don't have the burden of proof to prove that jealousy and overly just overly focusing on yourself is a justifiable means. So don't use the extreme case scenario to attack side of feminism. And certainly what we're saying, even though uh, we say you're selfish, it means that it doesn't mean that you're actively only blind by uh, binding and only prioritizing yourself. You still take several uh, decision-making factors into the process. And oftentimes, uh, selfish individuals are also more like to make a more cost benefit analysis when they're making a decision and second of all your decision is more likely to be overall rational because you know the prioritization the third piece of characterization is that how does it actually play out in the reality and how does it play out in the comparative of side negative so firstly we are saying in the interactions uh, between individuals so when this is on their narrative individuals are more like to say okay the partner and like for example my boyfriend are relatively more selfless and secondarily is that the burden of proof of side opposition is don't uh, we are not talking about whether or the impacts of simply being selfish and selfless is good or not today i think the correct discussion should happen of how exactly it changed the optic of society and how it is this narrative is actively being used by certain stakeholders and whether or not this is beneficial. Now move on to several positive material coming from side affirmative. Firstly, why we just believe that factually it's just quite true, quite true. So the first mechanism here is that through natural evolution and natural selection, just like the selfish individuals and selfish instincts of human nature are more likely to be protected because like the like Darwin theory or etc. And secondarily, normally people currently in higher position are more likely to get, uh, more likely to be selfish because if you are selfish, you're more likely to be promoted. We believe that this is like a uh, fact of the society. It's just generally speaking, the people of like relatively higher position are more likely to be selfish. And so it means that when you're like having this kind of 
self-initial, you're more likely to outcompete other people during the process when you're purchasing like financial resources and specific when you're primitive human beings, you're more likely to achieve success. What is the impact of this argument? It means that A, selfish is, is the likely biological feature of the, of the people. Even if you believe a narrative, even if you believe in a world where innate human nature is selfless. So we're saying on their world, they have to defend, you have a false and accurate analysis of what exactly is the human nature. And secondarily, we're going to tell you that people in power are selfish anyways, which is quite symmetric on both sides. So even though if you believe a world is selfless, but we're going to tell you all the leaders and political uh, political people who are in power are still going to be very selfish and self-oriented. And they still have lots of evil and pernicious and Machiavellian incentives. So why is this good? If we have like an accurate analysis and accurate perception of people being selfish, firstly, you just have more accurate and realistic perception, which is this is principally justified for people to have a better understanding of human nature and, and the world of the society. If you're just like falsely giving a lie that people are just generally self selfless and people are generally good, which is just objectively untrue. We say even though you sell a fantastic and utopia, but it doesn't have good utility on their side. And second, so second, secondary is that when you are having social connections and we're dealing with people, especially bad actors, you're more likely to, to respond rationally and you're more likely to give your rational decision, which is more accurate and better give you a social connection. And thirdly, you just have more protection from you for yourself from being manipulated by this really selfish individual and really selfish actors who don't believe that people are selfless and even though they believe but they're still selfish in nature so you have better protection of yourself even if you yourself are a selfless selfless individual because you believe in point? this narrative and the, yeah do you have a point uh yeah so people are products of their societies right people can act more selfishly and can act more selflessly depending on what's expected for them of them for example people tend to wear masks more in asian communities than they do in the fucking united states of america right so why isn't it more likely that people would actually be more selfless if this narrative was you know widespread and believed in society like we never prove that people are more likely to be selfless and we're going to tell you why on your side, you're not going to change the selfish and evil individuals and actors in the society. You're more likely to harm those people who are already benevolent, who are already nice in the society. So the fourth mechanism here is that selfless decisions sometimes are more likely to be incorrect and more likely to be inaccurate. And firstly, we're going to tell you why bad selfish leaders will be symmetric and they will actually manipulate the selfless people on the ground. Now, the second layer of this argument is that why you're going to have overall bad social connection from an individual perspective. So first of all, you're going to tell, you're all likely to be very confrontational you know, express your interests and exp express your concerns during the process you're having social connections. So even though someone makes you uncomfortable, for you are more, more likely to believe the narrative that, oh, we have to be selfless and this person is actually selfless. So you're just unlikely to represent and be vocalized of yourself. And secondarily, we're saying this is exclusively bad in a manipulative and toxic relationship because A, you're less skeptical about like the opposing party because you believe that they're selfless, they're good individuals. And secondarily, you're just less aware of red flag because you're less observant about like the self selfish nature and the evil nature of this individual. And thirdly, selfish means, selfless sometimes means that there is a social narrative and a coercion to say, oh, you should have like more sacrifices during the relationship. You prioritize their interests instead right. of your interests. So this is something actually uncomfortable. Sorry, it's like 650. And thirdly, it's just that you're less likely to self-represent yourself. And I think the impacts are threefold. Firstly, you are just like less uh, confrontational and vocal. And second of all, you're also unlikely to engage in political discussion in democratic settings. And my second speaker is going to further extend a uh, social structure, how you change legislation and economics, and why you actually uh, uh, allow a huge possibility for the bad actors to abuse. So for all these students, I've never proud to propose. Okay. I would like to thank the Prime Minister for her speech, call upon the opposition. Hey, hey. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, my preferred gender pronouns are he and him, and also like in POIs, um, please put in chat, or I, I kind of see the opponents like 
sitting on the table. So like, if you guys kind of like feel difficulties in raising QIC at chat, I think you can just raise your hand in your camera then I might be able to see that as well. Um, oh, thank you. Okay, my speech begins in three, two, one. I first want to tackle two points coming from the government side. Number one, they simply say that what well, factually people are kind of like genetically engineered to be selfish, right? But I don't think that is like necessarily true, especially when individuals are also kind of like genetically engineered to be like kind of a social individual at the end of the day, because like the human nature is, is they're kind of like social animals. And the reason why this is possible is because people need to cooperate with others. People need to be able to like cooperate with other individuals at the end of the day, because they have like, I don't know, like physically like less, you know, like superior traits to like other animals or whatnot. So I don't think that is factually untrue. But secondly, I would want to argue that they want simply want to say that the people with power are anyway going to be selfish and other people might have selfish incentives to act in a selfish way. Maybe this is true, but I think the tipping point here is the expectation that we assign and attach to each individual. And how can you actually make a better check and balance system when certain individual actually does certain selfish actions at the end of the day? If the expectation is that certain person is going to be selfless, but this person ends up being selfish, then probably there is going to be more social backlashes. There are going to be some more social check and balance mechanisms saying that you are supposed to be selfish. Individuals are desired and expected to be selfish, selfless, or you are doing in selfish action and that is the problem that we want to solve. At the end of the day, I think the difference here is that under their set of policies, when people are expected to be selfish and expected to prioritize their own self-interest, then probably I think this type of expectation and check and balance mechanism is going to be weaker under their set of the house and that is a comparative that they have to engage. The first thing I want to talk about is why the society is going to be more forgiving to the individuals at the end of the day. And I think this is because under our set of the house, when individual human nature is considered to be be selfless. But when certain individuals end up doing certain selfish acts, for example, when certain individuals commit certain like heinous crimes or commit certain criminal actions at the end of the day, then probably we have to look at why this person ended up being selfish, even though what this person was born selfless at the end of the day. That exactly is the point when we actually try to look at certain social economic factors. We actually try to look at certain like racial factors that actually like made this person to become selfish and have no choice but to commit certain crimes or whatnot. What this means is two things. Number one, under our side of the house, in order to prevent these things from happening, from prevent people from becoming selfish because of those type of like external factors, we actually do better things like education and more societally protective mechanisms to make sure that these people can still restore and try to like keep their like selfless innate ability at the end of the day. But also in terms of like criminal justice systems, we actually have more rehabilitative mechanism because now we have more belief in human potential to become a better person because, the, because this person is born as a selfless human being and therefore this person has a potential to restore that innate ability. And therefore we are willing to like give more resources to this person and give more education to this person and try to like, try to like make a better environment for this person so that this person can be better off at the end of the day. The comparative here is that, yeah, I do agree that some level of education and some level of protective mechanism can happen under their side of the house. Maybe they can mechanize that. But I think the tipping point here is that about the individuals to actually end up being as selfish at the end of the day. So when you believe that this person has failed to curb his selfish nature, then probably because this person is actually born as a selfish individual at the first place, and therefore this person is going to stay as a selfish individual, even if we try to put excessive amount of resources upon on this person, then probably there is less amount of societal impetus, less amount of incentive for the society to actually invest more resources to a particular person at the end of the day. I think this is very, very problematic because I think in terms of like people who are, who are considered to be selfish or the people who are on the bottom of the social hierarchy. For example, the black people are being more incarcerated because of racial like stereotypes or whatnot. So in order for us to actually look at those people's like backgrounds and social economic status and to make sure that these people get better off, no thank you. I I'm, I believe that is much better under our set of thoughts because we have more generosity to this person and more belief on this potential uh, potential for this person to become a better person at the end of the day, right? But the second thing as an extension of this about the in-group and out-group differences, because I think just because people are expected to be born selfish doesn't mean that the level of selfishness that is attached to each individual are going to be equal. What this means is that this particular narrative about selfish innate nature of individuals is going to 
cooperate and interact with pre-existing stereotypes. For example, like black people are bad, black people are aggressive, like for example, like gay people are strange or whatnot. What this means is that your people on your outgroup, for example, people who are black people, people who are like sexual minorities are now going to be more considered as selfish, are now going to be more considered as dangerous individuals who might threaten your like um threaten your associates as your own in group at the end of the day. That exactly is a point where it, there is more hesitance in terms of helping out these people, more hesitance in terms of raising these people because you consider these people as more dangerous individuals at the end of the day. In comparison to our side, under our side of the house, even though we do have these pre-existing stereotypes under our side of the house as well, but because we still have some level of belief in human nature that these people are still going to be a good human being at least in their heart. And that exactly is a reason that's why there is less incentive for antagonization on the other side of the house, less incentive for like, just like not embracing these people at all at the end of the day. The second thing I want to talk about is that's why we have more redistributive mechanisms, the safety nets that can actually help the people out at the end of the day. Because I think in the government side, the what selfish nature of people basically means that we are actually expecting that backlash happens when we are trying to like, I don't know, like collect more taxes at the end of the day, because because of like three comparative mechanisms. And this is a tipping point. Number one, people have more justifying mechanisms to be selfish because like being selfish is not necessarily a bad thing. Being selfish is something that is a like, human nature. That exactly is the point where people can justify their selfish nature much more in comparison to our set of thoughts when people are doing selfish actions. That is actually contrary to their human nature at the end of the day. And that's why there, there's more expectation that people should be selfless on their our side of the house. But secondly, I think people who have more more money, people who have more privileges under our set of house are going to be, have more control over the narratives at the end of the day. And these people do have the selfish incentive under our set of house, under their set of the house, as they have explained as well, which means that these people are going to use their capital and money to actually justify this selfish incentive at the end of the day. The third reason is that I think it is more likely to become a zero-sum game narrative, because if the people want to collect more taxes and try to like push for more taxation policies because these people are selfish and therefore we need to collect taxes. That can act in a converse way also. So if I want to say that we have to like curtail these right. levels to incentive of the individuals, then that converse thing can happen. Other people might be able to also curtail my ability to be selfish at the end of the day. And that's why people are being now more proactive in terms of saying that I, because I also don't want to be curtailed on my selfish incentive, I also have to be like agreeing that these people is justified to be selfish at the end of the day. What this means is that we have much more protective mechanisms, like more redistribution mechanisms, more taxation mechanisms that can actually lead to more welfare benefits and helping the more poor people at the end of the day. For all these reasons, I'm very, very proud to oppose. I'd like to thank the opposition for that speech. Call upon the Deputy Prime Minister here. here. Um, okay, can everyone hear me? Audible? All right. Sweet. Yeah, audible, uh, yeah. Uh, just for points of information, just like do the raised hand emoji and I'll call on you if I want a POI. Uh, yeah, please don't unmute till I call on you. Okay, starting my speech in three, two, one. This opposition team premises most of their case on the idea that having something being part of human nature provides a pressure for people to conform to it. We tell you that this is simply untrue. To the extent you believe it is your natural resting state to be a selfless person, you're far less likely to do internal introspection to try to hold yourself to that standard because you believe without any external intervention, you will be acting in a selfless manner. This means it's way harder for people to be proactive in trying to make selfless choices in trying to make choices that benefit society as a whole because they believe naturally that is their resting state and they don't need to intervene in any meaningful way in order to get bed, uh, better outcomes for society. 
This more or less defeats a majority of the case we hear from that opposition team. Because if you believe that people are fundamentally something or they have some fundamental characteristic, there's no reason people will try to cultivate that characteristic. There's no reason people will try to glorify it or to reward it in a social setting because it's simply seen as the norm. This is to say, when you believe people are intrinsically selfless, you're far less likely to pursue selflessness and you're far less likely to have a society that genuinely helps people. Well, that established two main parts of this speech. First of all, which side gets better outcomes for individuals and interactions between them? And second of all, which gets more favorable outcomes for society as a whole? The main push we hear from, uh, from opposition side on the idea of individuals getting better outcomes is that this belief compels people to be selfless. That is, if you believe people are innately selfless, people are more likely to become selfless. I deal with a lot of this in my introduction, but I'm going to do it in a more structured way here. First of all, we tell you that this is simply untrue, because if they believe that they're already selfless, it's unclear to me why they have any incentive to actively try to be selfless. In fact, it goes deeper than this, because if you believe you're selfless, you're far more likely to retroactively justify your selfish actions as being selfless. This can take a number of forms. This can look like abusive parents abusing their children and retroactively believing that it was for good of the child, instead of interrogating the flaws in the character. This can look like the leaders of nations oppressing minority groups because of internal prejudices they hold, but somehow believing that this is for the good of the nation. This could look like governments being overbearing upon its population because they believe as leaders, they know what's right and they're genuinely serving the population. This is incredibly harmful for this opposition team because if people are retroactively justifying their selfish actions because they believe they are selfless, you have far less ability to get change in society and people are generally far more selfish. Um, I'll take a point of information uh, uh, just whoever raised their hand first. Okay, so if selflessness yeah. is still a virtue on your side, right, then people still do absolutely see themselves as good people. And people right now in status quo, in where the status like belief is selfishness, absolutely do exactly the same things as you do. Isn't this harm pretty symmetric on both sides? No, okay, so the difference between the two debate, uh, the difference between the two sides here is that we have selflessness as like an external reward mechanism. Like if you're selfless in the status quo or selfless in a world where people are fundamentally selfish, that kind of action is far more likely to be rewarded and kind of drummed up as being a big deal. However, if it is just deemed to be internal, it's unclear to me why there's any incentive to focus on it or cultivate it in any meaningful way. Okay, this leads me to the second line of response from this opposition claim, because in a world where there's far less expectation for you to be selfless or sorry whether it's just a general expectation for you to be selfless it's unclear to me that you get any external benefit from doing something that is good for other people this means people who could have quite a large impact on society think for example people who have huge amounts of money billionaires or whatever are far less likely to do positive action in the world doing things like charity setups in order to differentiate uh, differ, differentiate themselves from just the general person who believes that they are selfless the final line of response here is that there's just quite a low delta in this debate than what opposition would have you believe. Because as I said before, we still have a reward mechanism in a world where people are fundamentally selfish for people who do selfless actions. That is, people who do charitable actions are currently rewarded, and it's unclear to me why that would change in any meaningful respect. All this is to say, on our side of the house, people are still motivated to be quite selfless, and they're just far less likely to cover up their bad actions by retroactively justifying them because they believe internally and intrinsically they are good people. We prefer a world in which people hold themselves to account, and we prefer a world in which people are far more willing to self-scrutinize. But this goes a layer deeper, because we never really get a response to the material we tell you at first, which is in a world in which you believe people are fundamentally self uh, selfless, you're far less likely to petition for your personal rights. That is, if you believe that someone is infringing upon your freedoms and infringing upon your rights as a human being, but you also take this person at giving them the benefit of the doubt and believe that they are selfless, you're probably likely to believe that they have your best interests at heart, even if they're really acutely exploiting you. This is just like mainly accruing to people who are the most oppressed in society. That is, I don't know, we are like a women or gender minorities, they're from like people who are just part of minority groups who probably no longer have the political capital to call out selfish actions from people oppressing them because the social norm is to believe that they have your best actions at heart. This means you get far worse environments that individuals can operate in. And it's so clear that we're ahead on this uh, on this idea of individual outcomes. Uh, no thank you on the POI. Second issue in this debate is whether we get better social outcomes and structures as a whole. A lot of this material is implicitly responded to in the first issue I give you. But I'll first explicitly deal with the idea of opposition pushing that minorities are treated better because they're seen as being selfless. The first line of response to this is that the people
people who hold these kind of prejudices to the extent that discriminating against people probably overpower this norm of selflessness in order to be cruel to these people. Like currently this norm that operates that, you know, people are valuable and humans should be treated with dignity, but people who are racist and sexist and prejudiced still overcome this norm to be really cruel to people. It's unclear to me why this is the tipping point for people being racist or not. But second of all, we tell you that this is just overpowered by our mechanism of these people being more willing and more compelled to like petition for their own rights. Okay, now with this idea of better social outcomes, because I think this opposition team misunderstands how a society would work in which people believe everyone else is selfless. They give us some material about there being more likelihood to have a better and more progressive tax and welfare system. We think this is just simply quite unimaginative on how the world would work. Like, imagine you believe that most really rich people have the best interest of other people at heart. It's so one clear to me why that would lead to a government implementing a taxation system and a welfare system because you probably just believe that these people are going to help people out in general. What this means is that this opposition team needs to support a counterfactual in which people aren't being supported by the government because they simply believe that people individually of their own human nature will be supporting them. And we tell you at first, this is probably just factually untrue. You leave a bunch of people behind in this opposition side and you never meaningfully help them in any capacity. The final extension here is just a far more likely to get dictatorial rule that is if you believe people are like significantly selfless you're probably more willing to submit to the leadership of tyrants who probably can't represent your interests you know extend this to the whole of human history tyrants have never really been a good thing it's a huge harm that you have more dictators on this opposition side probably debate winning material for us for those reasons so proud to propose like to thank the deputy prime minister for our speech call upon the deputy of here here Well, can I be seen and heard? Um, hello, can I be seen and heard? Yeah, you can. Great. Um, just give me like two seconds to organize my notes. <clears throat> Right. My speech will begin in three, two, one. Panel, these guys are so soft. They can't both claim that you can make rational decisions on their side, but also say, ah, but then we're also going to consider other people to a certain extent. Because the fact of the matter is, if these guys are telling us that people are selfless on their side already, that, you know what that means? That defeats their own principle because their choices are already being limited. Second, I would posit that the agency is a privilege. Like, for instance, my ability for me to be myself as a minority is significantly more limited compared to my ability to be myself as a person that is of white, rich white privilege. To speak against, uh, up against my coworkers are privileges you can only access if you're the boss, for instance, if you're already in power, if you're in a high, higher social status. The majority of people on their side, for instance, who are minorities, for instance, the people who don't have the power cannot access this because of the different power dynamics, because the moment in which I become myself on their side, it's going to be seen as eccentric. It's going to be used against myself. Second, you say that naturally you will be selfless. Note that this defeats their own principle because on their side, you will do on our side, you'll be able to do whatever they want, defeating their own principles and choice is something that is symmetric. Next, they say that you can justify selfish actions and selfless. Look, there is no incentive on their side to be better since they can easily say, ah, it's not something that I can control. It is my nature to be selfish. And therefore, there's no incentive to be held against higher standards. But second, you say that selfness is going to be a reward. Do you see how this defeats their own argument? Because if you can say that on their side, self selflessness is going to be a reward, you know what that means? You can It means that you can identify it because you cannot reward something that you cannot identify. Look, in a world in which we systematically study selflessness or study human nature from selflessness, I, I have discussions 
uh, it means that you can identify these things far better. That is why it is wrong for them to say that you can do whatever you want and say this is selflessness because presumably other people will call it out for being selfishness because if these guys can identify what is selfish and what is selfless on their side, this means that you can also identify what is selfish and selfless on our side and then other people can call you out for it. But second, look, if these guys tell us that people are going to do whatever they want on our side, do you see how this not only defeats their own case, but it defeats their, their case as well? Because it also means that people can do whatever they want. That's why this debate has to assume that this has some normative effect. They have to assume that people on our side are to a certain extent acting in a selfless way in order for their choice principle to make sense. These guys are like just debating, you know, these guys are just like going against the rules of debating. I don't know what they're getting out there. Before I move on, yeah. Uh, in a world in which you're willing to give people the benefit of the doubt and think they're selfless, what incentive is there to scrutinize their actions more carefully? No, 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 because you tell us that obviously on our side, selflessness is something that's going to be celebrated. It's going to be seen as the default, right? If you see actions that are out of the ordinary, you're obviously going to want to call that out. But second, we're also going to explain why the ways in which we're going to call that out, or the ways in which we're going to solve that problem is going to be a lot more better on our side. But next, we think on a world by world comparison, the morality and the way in which society is structured on their side is likely to be with selfishness in mind. For instance, society is likely to structure, be structured in a way that respects individual selfishness. For instance, it's likely to be more libertarian. It means you have less restrictions in the sort. On our side, what you get is you have states following the ideal state of humans. It means more distribution in the sort. That's the trade-off that you have to first assume for this debate to occur in the first place. These guys can't both say that you can respect choices, but also have a lot of redistribution on their side. Next, how do we deal with crimes, right? My thesis here is that the sort of discussions that we're going to have about the behavior of individuals are likely to be far more productive on our side. Look, we think things like laws and we think social norms exist symmetrically since a lot of these things are reactive. For instance, if stealing is a recurring issue, then you would want to deal with it in some capacity Capacity, regardless of what you believe human nature to be. However, I think the difference here is that the way in which this looks like is different. Look, on opposition, on our side, the policy discussions, discussions about human nature are likely to be about underlying problems that make someone selfish since it is something that is out of the ordinary. Therefore, if something, if someone does something that is selfish or someone does something that is a crime, we're unlikely to just simply bash them. But then the way in which you're likely to deal with it is to look at the underlying problems for instance, by like minorities or poor people, things like poverty, things like mental health issues. And we're more interested in a lot of these statistics to solve a lot of these underlying problems that a lot of minorities are likely to face. What do you get on their side? You have looking at people on an individual basis. This means that you have increasing punishments for individuals, for instance, who commit things like um, crimes out of need because these people are seen as being more selfish than others. We explain to you why people are likely to be held to different standards when it comes to selfishness. This means that it means we have more bigger punishments disproportionately for people who are, for instance, poor, people who are minorities, because these people's actions are seen as being attributed because they are more selfish than me as a privileged person, as opposed to them, you know, facing some underlying problem like things like poverty, that they are uneducated. That's why they're more selfish than me. Therefore, why, that's why you have significantly more punishment and no re rehabilitation on their side. Next thing I want to talk about individual interactions. Look, if you systematically be, believe that other people are selfish, you're likely to interpret their motives in the way in which they act in a selfish way. And you, it also means that you're not likely to be able to trust them because, for instance, if you open up to them, whatever you tell them is likely to be used against you in the future. What does it mean? On their side, it means that you cannot have deep connections with other individuals because you need to, ex you know, express your insecurities and go through rough patches with other people for you to make deep connections, to have mutual trust in our side. On our side, look, on their side, things like narratives uh, on their side, these guys argue that on our side, you can't, you're always going to make sacrifices. You're going to be abused by other people in the store. Look, the narratives of having to make good relationships are still existing on our side. This means that if you're always feeling like you're always only making sacrifices, if you're able to identify signs that the other person is actually quite selfish, then you're going to likely to distance yourself in the future. What's the, because the fact of the matter is selfless is always selflessness is reciprocity based, meaning that if that person isn't reciprocating or if that person has hurt me, I'm likely to move away in the long term. What is the comparative? Look, Maybe people are more naive on our side, but then the harms of that are mitigated by in the short and or short run. Because the fact of the matter is, if you get hurt once, then you, you can learn from it. And for instance, be able to better identify signs of toxicity. But second, it also means that you can, if you get hurt, you can rely on your other deep connections to look for solicity. This means that a lot of our impacts are more long run, as opposed to them saying that people are more naive, might get hurt in the short run, right? I think what it means is that people in general are able to make better 
deep personal connection. This is the second path to victory because first we explain to you why society as well is better and why minorities are better protected because on their side you're held to unfair standards. You're say you know you're told that you're more selfish than other people. You deserve higher punishments. For instance, if you be yourself, you're going to be demonized on their side. But second, we also explain to you why independently of those practical impacts, you also just get more better personal interactions, which is something that is significantly in the most proximate impact in this round. So even if it doesn't, if, even if this world doesn't lead to significant like legal changes, for instance, because these guys try to wash it off, we still have a, another path to victory in which we prove that human interactions have come in general become a lot better. People can better form bonds with other people. We're so proud to oppose. Well, thank you, Yellow for us. Each call upon the golf work here. Uh, am I audible? Um, I'm going to assume yes. Uh, cool. Um, like POIs, please just do the raised hand emoji and I'll call upon you. Uh, by the way, I'm answer here. Cool. Um, starting my speech in three, two, one. Guys, let's be clear about what's happening in this debate. Both teams kind of agree that people are still rational. They still understand what is selfish and selfishness. What this debate is about is about how people initially act, opt into relationships, how they perceive society, and it occurs mainly in fringe cases. When talking about the most vulnerable actors in this debate, it's unclear to me why we're going to get like dramatic social change and actually change how people act like and like in, inherently, right? So where does this debate occur? First of all, we think it occurs when you like opt into a relationship, right? You're probably more likely to be slightly more skeptical and you're probably not just going to believe that they have your best interest at heart at all times. It probably means it's just harder for you to be gaslit in abusive relationships because maybe you believe no when they tell you that like they love you and that they have your best interest at heart. Maybe that in this, um, they, maybe they are selfish and it's easier for you to opt out. And probably on their side, it means people things like the expectations of feminine figures and mothers are expected to give up more because of societal expectations that they be selfish, which means they are notably giving up more of what's important to them. They are less likely to have access to like um like things in their career and they're giving up more in their lives. No, they kind of agree with this, right? So this essentially means that their analysis of changing how people actually act, they get like saying we get more visas and we get better taxation. I think that's not what this debate is about. This debate is about the small scale instances of how relationships occur. First thing I'm going to do in this speech is, is I'm going to prove to you why people are not going to be more, like more selfish, which is what they kind of claim at first, but they kind of run away from this at seconds. The first thing we'd say here is about this is th this topic is about perceptions and it's not assumed. But the second thing is we give you pretty good analysis at first as to why people are just biologically and hierarchical and like bi biologically likely to be selfish. And there are hierarchical systems that the people who get to the top of society and have the most power to inflict on people are likely to be the ones that are selfish. Because notably, if there are 20 people in a group and only one person gets promoted you have to take access to the better resources and you have to notably compete with other people and be selfish to get that one promotion this means the people who are the ones who are like biologically the people who were more selfish in the past survived and this trait is likely to have been passed down and the people who are controlling society and at the top are likely to be selfish what are their response to this at first we get like a, a response which is like ah so humans are social and they have best interest at heart of other people but note here how this is not an actual response to our mechanized analysis but second thing, you can be social and you can be selfish at the same time, right? Which is to say you can want to help, like you can like want to interact with other people, but maybe that's a selfish idea, right? Maybe you're just doing it because like you like talking to people. But the third thing and most important response here we give you is that you can both want to help other people, but you can want to help yourself more. And that's what selfless, um, self interest is about, right? Because it's not about saying I want other people to like be like worse off. It's about saying that I want to be better off. And that's what we contend down the bench. Then they say that there's less chance for justifying bad actions. But the first thing we'd say here is that this is just like not comparative, right? Because people just assume that you are acting selflessly because that's what's innately believed to be um, like societal outcomes, right? So there are external justifications and people believe, oh, you're probably just doing that. And it's likely that you have self, um, that you're like selfless um, and you have my best interest at heart. So I'm just going to justify 
and believe that that's correct. But the second thing we'd say here is that there's more chance for you to justify it, right? You can tell people that when you did something, you were acting selflessly because that's what they're more likely to believe because that's innately believed to be true. So it's less, there's actually more chance for you to justify bad actions, which is something that they must contend with on, on, on the side opposition that they haven't really done that. Then they say that like, um, then they just assume that there's going to be some sort of normative effect. But notably, this debate is not about the norms of like actually being selfless. This Storm debate is about the norms of perceiving people to be selfish. I do not think you can just generally assert that people are going to be more selfless in this debate. Yes, I'll take a POI. Um. Yeah, so under your side of the house, when people think that they are selfish, and therefore I think the society has more incentive to actually oppress the selfish incentive and try to make community like more close and exclusionary under your side of the house as well. Um, well, we think when people are assumed to be selfish, right, there's probably just more societal expectation to regulate this stuff and enforce policies, which means they can't access, um, they can't be like selfish in a bad way, right? For example, if you believe that like, oh, the, in, in, the inherent person is selfish and is not going to give to charity, it's probably likely you have stricter taxation laws such that like you get better outcomes. I think that kind of response to what you're saying is being selfish good, which is the next thing I'm going to contend with in this debate. The first thing that we say here is that the norm is perpetuated to the most vulnerable actors. This is like women being expected to give up their careers because it, um, because it is innately believed to be true that like you are um, selfless and it's like you should look after your kids, right? And we think that the expectation hits the most vulnerable actors the most. And this is something that they must contend with, right? So we think generally speaking, in there are many instances where being selfish, um, selfless is bad because you get access to like less material benefits in life. For example, working and making more money and improving your material condition, or just having access to a job which you enjoy. The second thing we'd say here, there are many... Like, like entrances but being self-interested is inherently good what do they say they say you're more likely to have access to give things like visas you are more likely to have bad access to a better taxation system i think this is just kind of cap right because notably it's unclear why this is ever actually occurring in this debate because in a world where you believe that people are innately selfless um and selfless you must reevaluate how exactly society is structured right because you believe that people in other countries are likely to be inherently selfish and you believe there's like less likelihood that they need to come to your country right it's harder for you to actually perceive that taxation is something that's needed because you just assume that people are giving up their money because that's something that's selfless, right? We think at the end of this debate, it's really unclear that they get the delta, right? Which is to say in this debate, they're going to get more tax and better visas. But even if they do, I think we use it better on our side because we can regulate bad actors, which we are proven to be more likely to be... Um, more likely to be acting badly. What do we then tell you on actual outcomes? We tell you you get things like speaking up. We tell you, you get more skepticism when you're opting into relationships, which notably is incredibly important because the vulnerable actors, the people who are more likely to be naive, the people who are more likely to be um, um, like targeted badly by people who are co-opting them are more likely to just think before they opt into a relationship that maybe this person does not have my interest at heart. What is their response to this, right? They say that like one, only people with power can speak up. One, like no, this dynamic exists every everywhere. Sure, might your speaking up might have less power, but it's still like something that's likely to be good when you like speak up in your own relationship, right? Because maybe like your boss doesn't believe you, but it's probably likely that your partner is likely to believe you. And that's something that's good. But two, we think that's just like notably less, this is not comparative and there's less chance to speak up. We'd prefer a world where we have more ability. But then they say it's, um, um, it's like harder to speak up and it, like it's harder to speak about your life because you know you'll think it'll be used against you but notably we still meet people we still learn and we still gain trust with them right this debate is about initially opting in and being skeptical at the start but once you build that trust it's likely you're still going to tell them because people want to tell these things so i don't think this um, debate occurs under that like premise but then but then it's probably just good that at the beginning of your relationship right that you don't tell people stuff that could be used against you because notably if you believe that they are selfish and they don't have your best interest at heart that's something that we ought not want to do. It's unclear why initial skepticism makes it harder to get close. I think it's something that can only be good because it means vulnerable actors who are likely to be worse off under our, um, worse off under their side are better off under our side. I think at the end of this debate, you must believe that relationships exist in a better fashion under our side because you are better able to understand the consequences. And notably, because people, we have proven down the bench that because people are just naturally more likely to be selfish, this is something which you must weigh highly. And we think it's better that people be realistic. Thank you. All right, then the um, government for our speech, call upon the upweb here, here. Hey, yeah, <clears throat> I'll just take a second, a minute. <laughs> Mm 
All right, anytime? Sure. Sure, can I start? Okay. Um, let's start in three, two, one. We act according to the standards that are expected of us. If humans are expected to be selfish, then we will be. If we're expected to be selfless, then again, we will be. I've got two questions in this debate. The first question is how much do individual behaviors change because of this? And secondly, how do we change societal dynamics or societal interactions between in-groups and out-groups in this debate? Let's first go into the first question, changing individual behavior. I'm gonna first briefly deal with the genetic thingamadooki that's been going on for the last couple of speakers, right? Look, are humans genetically self-interested or are they genetically social animals? I think they're going to be, you know, genetically more predisposed to these social animals because, you know, that's sort of the defining fucking feature of humanity, the fact that we were selfless enough to not like murder each other and make, make, you know, big societies and cooperate. But the fact of the matter is it's probably a little bit of both. Right? Like, on net, I think, Judge, you're going to find this a wash because it's pretty assertive coming from Gov to just be like, oh, okay, humans are self-interested and probably somewhat deserve it coming from Op that, yeah, humans are social animals. Realistically speaking, I think we both realize that social standards and social expectations do change our behaviors, right? So the meat of this debate is not expecting, is not being like, ooh, like, are humans social animals? Are humans inherently selfish? It's about, okay, how does this narrative change things? So how does this narrative change things? We've been telling you from OP that because we're held to a standard, because we're held to a higher baseline, that we do then try to uh, uh, conform to that baseline, both on an individual, like, like positive, level, like, sorry, positive self-driven level on a self, self level, as well as on a societal enforcement level, other people enforce it on you. Like, so first on the selfish level, from the get-go, we all want to be normal, right? We want to be seen as baseline. We feel out, like, I think we all remember our teenage like days where we're like so angsty, but like, oh my God, I'm so strange. Why can't I just be like everybody else? We think that the same thing goes for like societal narratives. If the baseline so like, act action for humanity is seen to be selfless than rather selfish, it's much more difficult to justify to yourself that, oh, actually the things that they're doing are like perfectly fine, even if they're selfish, right? We would think it's gonna be it's think it's obviously going to be easier to justify to yourself if the things that you're doing are selfless, that you're a good person. So therefore people are almost obviously going to be likely to be driven for themselves to want to conform to these societal standards. But also later, other people enforce aberrant self, like aberrant behaviors, right? Like, sorry, enforce like tapping down on aberrant behaviors, right? If selfishness is seen as aberrant, because that's what selfishness has to be seen like, right? Like if baseline human behavior is seen as selflessness, then selfish behavior is going to be seen as aberrant. Just like right now, because baseline human behavior is seen as selfish, that selflessness is seen as a positive aberration. So if people are going to enforce trying to tapping down on this negative aberration that they see as, selfless, as selfishness, right? They're going to be like, why are you contravening human nature? You're supposed to be like this. Why aren't you being just a same baseline human like the rest of us? And like, this is actually a pretty powerful outside like motivator, right? Like think about it, like at least the very least when you're growing up, think about it like hearing that kind of line from your parents. We think it's a pretty scary thing, that, uh, almost a dehumanizing, dehumanizing threat. That I think we think that can absolutely enforce a powerful impulse to be more selfless in our side of the world, when things are baseline, as opposed to just simply like, oh, maybe this will be nice. But what does Gov say to this? Gov tells us that actually no, well actually DPM tells us that no, people can actually fake this, both to themselves and then they can also fake their selflessness to others. Like they can justify their selfish actions by just, you know, assuming that, oh, I'm a default person, uh, default is selfless, so actually I'm selfish, even if my actions are obviously self selfish. I mean, the problem with this argument is that it makes the entire debate symmetric, right? Like the debate is useless because by that logic, because selflessness is still a virtue on their side, they can still pretend to themselves, oh no, I'm a good person because everybody wants to be a good person, right? They pretend to themselves, I'm a good person, good people are selfless, therefore I am selfless, regardless of whether or not my actions are actually selfless, right? Which means no thank you, which means that Therefore, that it kind of contributes their entire like rest of their logic about oh, actually, like selfishness being a virtue kind of can be a good thing. Like, I think we have to assume in this debate that we can reasonably identify aberrant behavior on both sides of the house. This aberrant behavior being selflessness on their side and selfishness on their on our side, which you know leads me to their next point, right? Which is they then tell us in their speech that actually we on our side we will be able to point out selflessness and reward it, right? By being, being able to make selflessness exceptional and point and aberratory, we reward it. Like, obviously, this is contradictory, but also. I think this is all just also politically not as powerful as setting an entire norm. Rewards, people are less motivated by rewards that like bring, like 
that may or may not actually happen, right? Because the propensity to reward, I think, is just generally low. Like what realistically, what happens when you get rewarded for selflessness? You get a little pat on the back, right? They like they say themselves that like selfless people don't actually get rewarded in society in our society today. They don't tend to get to high jobs or whatnot. So the rewards for selflessness right now are actually quite low according to their own characterization of the status quo, right? As compared to that, the if you said a normal selflessness, which means that you can actively punish selfishness by I don't know, spanking them or like uh, like like scolding them or whatnot. Then we think this is obviously just much more powerful and enforcer a mechanism than it is for to create selflessness than not. Okay, but then what does Gus say to this? Gus says, "Oh no, but you're not going to be able to stand up for yourself, right? People are going to be like if you're going under harassment or you're going under fraud, right? Or if we or if minorities are going to be." then you're not going to be able to do this. First off, I think this is quite a small impact because two things exist in, in both sides of the house. The first is reciprocity, right? People are still able to identify that they're being fucked over, right? They're also like, they're able to identify selfishness and they're still, like, you know, like if people are able to identify it on this or on their world, they're also be able to identify this on our side of the house too, right? Then And then they say, oh, actually, no, selfishness being a norm is going to be bad because it affects minorities more. This is also symmetric because selfishness is still seen as a virtual on their world. Women in our world right now, under their world, are also still very much pushed into these positions much more right now because selflessness is still virtue. These people are forced to become virtuous human beings. Again, I think this kind of impact is quite symmetric for their side. All right, on the impact then, we make more selfless individuals across society and they don't think their case was very powerful or their entire case was just. So secondly, what's the key part of the way the entire job? Changes in social interactions, right? We told, okay, individual clash might be a wash, but narratives absolutely do. So we two things. First, we told you that we're much more forgiving to the poor and the downtrodden, right? Remember all of the political narratives and like rhetoric that we hear about welfare policies and criminal and, and criminals, or I don't know, those who are accused by just saying, "Oh, they're fucking selfish. They're welfare queens. We don't. They don't deserve to get anything more because you know, like it's just their fault." Right? If we assume that they're actually better people than that, if we assume that actually it's not it's that their fault that they weren't just being selfish, that we think that they're better people than that shittiness, then we're able to easily, much more easily justify help. Or rather, that conservative backlash against any sort of welfare policies, against any sort of forgiveness for these kind of downtrodden people, is much is much more or less likely to happen because the baseline assumption that people are, these people are selfish, these people are like fucking fucked up bad human beings, is not as easy to respond to. And Gov has no response to this at all. Secondly, we have a better enforcement redistribution. Now, Gov says that, oh, we can assume they're rich. I mean, probably to a certain extent. But again, people aren't idiots, right? People can identify when people are being average selfish. We think that, yeah, we might have a few more millionaires, but we're not going to be able to have, we're going to have a lot less billionaires because there's a certain point at which you cannot assume a selfless person when they've uh, amassed that amount of money and they've done that amount of selfish deeds. Laws react uh, are set reactively to aberrations of society. We think that if we're able to identify billionaires as aberrations of societies, the laws are much more likely to be set to try to get rid of this aberration, get rid of billionaires, and therefore enforce stronger redistributive policies. So for all these reasons, I'm very proud to oppose. Thank you. Thanks, thank the opposition of our speech. Call upon the opposition reply speaker here. here. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, um, my speech will begin in three. Oh, sorry. Three, two, one. I'm first going to talk about wh whether or not we have more and check and balance in individual action. Maybe it is true when the government said that people have incentive to act selfishly. Question is, who can better check and balance these actions at the end of the day? Let me first talk about the internal introspection, because governments simply argue that because people think that they are selfish, now they have like more incentive to look upon themselves and try to correct those selfish actions. But the problem here is that in order for you to be introspecting yourself based upon a certain moral standard, that moral standard also needs to be buying upon the selflessness in order for you to correct that selfish action at the end of the day, right? The point that DLO told you, that insofar as you buy into the narrative of selfishness Human, selfish human nature and what this human is expected to do is something that is selfish and something that human cannot change probably it is also going to be morally structured in a way that 
probably respects this selfishness at the end of the day. So insofar as you don't like harm the third party, probably you are able to do whatever you want or whatnot. Those part of world principles are going to be dominant under their side of the house, whereas under our side, when we more focus on selflessness as a human nature, for example, the Kantian like moral paradigm that you're obliged to act in a goodwill is going to be the more predominant thing that happens under our side of the house, which means that the standard moral standard that people refer to when they introspect themselves is qualitatively better under our side of the house because we buy into more selfless on their our side of the house and then opposition say that but like other people are going to assume that you're acting upon selflessness but like i'm really interested to why other external actors are going to act in that way because the main mechanism that we told you is that when this expectation that you are going to act in a selfless way is being turned down because you are acting selflessly then people will criticize you and check and balance your actions i think then simply asserting that but like people are always going to like assume that you are acting selflessness is very, very um, uncharitable under their side of the house. And then we can and then we hear a case shift from the government and government would suddenly like tries to like maximize their impact upon like women staying in home because they have to be selfless. Do you know at best this asymmetric claim? Because government's mechanism on you being a good person is that people will self-regulate to become selfless even though their human nature is selfish. And then that exactly is the reason as to why suddenly women wouldn't be able to like abandon kids and pursue their career or whatnot because they think that they still have to be selfless uh, even though their human nature is selfish at the end of the day, right? That exactly is the reason that's why it is a symmetric claim under their side of the house. Then the second question is, why we have more distribution under our side of the house? Government's claim here is that we were going to still have tax because we know that they are not going to do this in a voluntary way. Yeah, maybe this is true. But the tipping point here is the degree of the taxes that we can actually collect on either side of the house. Because what I have told you in my leader of opposition speech is that number one, because people are selfish and they are going to easily justify their selfish action because that is something that people cannot really you have control because that is something that people expect on other people that you are going to act in a certain level selfish way that exactly is the moment when those rich people might pay taxes yeah but the degree of the tax is not going to be as high as under our side of the house because we expect people to be more selfless we expect people to be more responsible of the privileges that you have and that's the point when we actually have more taxes under our side of the house they never respond to any of the comparative claims that come from my, my speech for example because it is a zero-sum game but the people on the run say that the people on the like who have privileges have to curtail their selfish interests probably that will also have a backlash that you also have to curtail your own self-interest under your side of the house at some point of time at the end of the day but lastly let's talk about why better protection of uh, better protection embracement upon minorities can also happen on better happen under our side of the house because under our side of the house you still have to believe and faith upon individual possibility of becoming a good person because you're you're born as a good person at the end of the day that exactly is the moment when I think you have more ability and willingness to look upon your socioeconomic status and socioeconomic like some factors that actually make you to commit certain actions under our side of the house. But under your side of the house, when people are assumed to be already selfish, they don't have incentive to go over the pre-existing stereotypes and try to look upon the good parts of the individuals who you already don't like at the end of the day. That exactly is the reason that's why we have more embracement under your side of the house. We didn't see any of the meaningful engagement coming from their side. That's why I think we are just comprehensively winning today's debate. I thank the offer price speaker for our speech. Call upon the offer price speaker here. Uh, I'm not audible. Yeah, you
Uh, I'm audible. Okay. What do I want? The only unchargeable comparative set negative with one willing to engage in today's debate is that if everyone in this society is miraculously truly selfless and benevolent, this is a better world than people who are overly self-centered and who people who have criminal incentives. The only push we get from 3N is like people are easier to justify their selfish incentive because of defaultness. However, I told you as the introduction in my speech, we believe that people are burned to be lust, people are burned to be greedy, people are burned to be procrastination, people are burned to be messy. These are the innate human nature we believe in the status quo. But nobody has ever used being innate as a justification for tolerating these traits. This is something we told you at second affirmative, which leaves uncontested, that the reason why we currently regulate selfish actors is that we know this is an innate human nature that we want to counteract. That is the reason why we have the unique imperative on our side to regulate these evil actors, because we know that there are bad people, bad actors in the society. We have the correct observation, as we've told you that factually speaking the people who are in the positions these authoritarian governments these dictators they are factually selfish however on their side because you falsely believe into the false narrative that everybody is so selfless people have your best interest at heart you remove the skepticism you remove this kind of trigger warning and red flag of yourself they can actually protect you in the status quo now let's move on to why uh, let's move on to the only benefit the side negative still has that is quite tangible into this debate is that you probably have a better welfare society what is the problem of this firstly taxation and policies only get changed and we only regulate the big corporations and big firms, as we told you down the bench, is that you believe that firms are self-interested. You believe that they are profit, they have profit-driven incentive. You believe that they are not selfless enough to have huge charity donations. The only comparative on their side is that when you're believing that selfless, uh, the firms are innately and actually and factually selfless, you would just expect them to give charity donations, right? So we say that the idealistic claim from set negative talking about warfare system, which is challenged by set affirmative, is never responded. And second of all, to talk about the uh, problem of backlash, to uh, try to answer back over, uh, over imperative on public scrutiny. However, if Republicans today, they don't raise taxes and they don't give you a good welfare system, you never say Donald Trump is selfish, right? You're just saying that they are like prioritizing the interests of like, for example, big corporations, but you will never accuse the politicians of being selfish just because they didn't raise ta taxes. So we're saying, even though you have the selfish narrative, you're not going to regulate and change these malicious actors. So this is quite symmetric on our side. Now, let's look at what is exactly the benefit of selfishness as human. We've already proven you in the society, even if we take the best case scenario that some people are selfless. But please remember the framing, which is uncontested contested throughout the debate. The more likely people who are going to believe this narrative and who are also likely to be influenced by these actions are these already benevolent actors in the status quo. Because we've told you from an evolutionary perspective, which is objectively true, the people in power of position, those government regulators, and general speaking the people are still incentivized to be more selfish and they're just like factually and objectively more selfish in their nature so these people who believe in this narrative are already this least vulnerable group of people in our society that is where the way in come here you'll probably change some perception of the middle class people but you are actively harming this least vulnerable group of our society where we told you these people who are in toxic relationship are very unlikely to opt out because they always believe that the other opposing party had the best interest of their heart which 
we receive like literally zero response from side uh, side negative only claiming that I have a case shift, which that was literally the first argument, my first affirmative speech. And secondarily, we already told you how like minority and ethnic minority and if this enfranchised group in our society are more like to be manipulated by the dictatorship and sorry, tyrant regimes because they force you to be selfless. They force you to sacrifice your democratic principles. They force you to so, so sacrifice your chance of vocalize. You're less likely to be confrontational as proven in my speech. So for all this reason above, never potter to our friend. I'd um, like to thank the 